the things we wanted to do in life were really aligned. Which we didn't even know yet no, at that point. No. At that point, it was just like one another's soul and body and mind. You were still slinging vintage, and I was DJing and playing in bands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were young. We needed to do plant work. Only you know. six years ago, and we were so young. Hi, friends, and welcome to the Medicine Stories podcast, where we are remembering what it is to be human upon the earth. This is episode 56. I am Amber Magnolia Hill, and today I'm talking to my husband, Owen. I hope that you enjoy this peek into our lives. It's unlike any previous interview. Um, Very casual, of course. And I had no outline, nothing planned. We're just talking. We're just talking about how we make our life together work. We work together from home every single day, raising kids, doing the house work and running this business. So it's an intense and intensive relationship. Um, But it was really nice to just relax and talk for a while and definitely the most stress free interview I've ever done. Even when I'm interviewing a friend or someone I feel really comfortable with, there's just um, a little more planning and preparation and stress involved. So this came at a good time for both of us, for me in this podcast journey to just kind of like relax into it and put something out there that we hope people find interesting. Um, Today or this week sometime, we have released two new medicines in the Mythic Medicinals online shop. One of them is our extra potent elderberry elixir year four year four of selling the Seelixer, I believe. Many of you are already familiar with it. Many of you have been waiting for it and asking me when it's coming back. So it is now up in the shop, depending on when you listen to this. Um, The batches sell out more quickly than we can make the next batch. So no promises if you go to mythicmedicine.love that it's going to be in stock. But um, if you listen to this on the day it comes out, hopefully it will be. And we will make more. We always, always make more. So you can learn more about the extra potent elderberry elixir there at the website. And we also have a new medicine out. This is our motherwort elixir. So it's just a, a simple medicine, a one plant medicine motherwort um, tincture with a little bit of honey to make it easy to just put the dropper right onto your mouth there. And it's really interesting making and selling herbal medicine. You have to be so careful about the way you talk about what your herbal supplement does and can do. So I thought I would just share a few Instagram comments from a couple months ago when I posted a photo of Owen and I with huge motherwort harvest that we had done that day that is the the plants that are in this medicine there's like almost 200 100 and something um comments on this post and i was just blown away by people's experiences with motherwort because it's a pretty new plant to me i've heard of it of course but just hadn't really worked with it one-on-one so i'm just going to read a few comments here Motherwort has helped me in so many ways, particularly anxiety, like when I wake up in the middle of the night just to worry. I just take a few drops of motherwort tincture and before I know it, I am relaxed and dreaming. Also great for regulating my menstrual issues. My son just got his driver's permit and I am not riding along without motherwort. She calms me down in that moment if I'm feeling overwhelmed. I love motherwort for cramps and an anxious heart. I blend it with wood betony and St. John's wort for anxiety easing. My mom and her friends swear by it from menopause, especially combined with black cohosh and evening primrose. Motherwort, heart, like a down comforter in the cold, snuggle up to motherwort. For me, it's very centering and grounding, feels like a big warm hug. I harvested my crop in the summer and dried them and now use teas. This plant has been an ally since we lost our first child. It was there for me and helped me show up for life, literally. After I had twins last year, I took a tincture religiously. 
If I forgot to take it within 24 hours, adrenal fatigue and depression would creep in. As soon as I started to feel anything, I would take my tincture and within 24 hours feel as if whatever was creeping in didn't exist. When I would be depressed or off, my husband would ask if I had taken my motherwort today. So yeah, I, I could read so many more comments. Clearly I'm not going to, but the motherwort elixir is in the shop now. And I don't think that one will sell out. I don't know. I don't know. As Owen and I talk about in this interview, things are selling fast lately, some of them faster than we can keep up with. So no promises. And of course, some of you are going to be listening to this months or years down the road. Um, But just know that we plan to keep making these medicines and restocking them. So tune in. Um, And for Patreon, I'm going to be doing a giveaway, be giving away one bottle of one eight ounce bottle. So one of the big ones of the elderberry elixir and one bottle of motherwort elixir. And those will go to the same person. So one person will win two bottles of medicine, those two bottles of medicine. So head over to patreon.com slash medicine stories to enter. This is open to everyone, not just patrons of the podcast. And let's see, we will close this contest on October 18th. October 18th will be the last day to, um, to enter, to comment there. So I, you know, after talking to Owen during this interview a couple of days ago, I was thinking about like what makes our marriage work because it does work. It's a good, solid, stable, happy marriage. And I, there's so many variables and things I could say, but I just kind of narrowed it down to like three big ones and thought I would just distill that here in the intro. One for us is having this shared interest in plants. Um, I wouldn't have predicted that that would be such a strong glue that keeps our marriage together before, before it happened, before we met and fell in love and found out what another was a plant person. But it is so helpful to really just have a passionate interest in common for us. And I had not had that in previous relationships. Of course, there have been some overlap. Um, I had one relationship with very little overlap and interest. And I remember telling him like, this just doesn't work for me. And he was like, no, it's a lot of, a lot of relationships are like this. You know, we can make it work. We, we love each other. It's like, that's true, but it's, it's just missing something for me that I can't like share my passions and my loves with you. So for Owen and I, it is a very foundational part of our relationship is sharing this passion for plants. Um, the second one is supporting one another's dreams. I truly believe that if you are in a relationship where your partner poo-poos your dreams, <laughs> that that relationship is not nurturing you. And therefore, it's probably not a great relationship to be in. Um, I know people like this. My dad is like this. Just those people who are like, oh, come on, that's that's never going to happen. Are like, okay, babe, good luck with that. But man, just, you know, really supporting one another and their goals in life is just so important. And doing that for each other has allowed me and Owen to continue growing, to continue growing. Um, we've both been, we've both had projects going that took away from the family, took money, time, and energy, but we understood how important it was to the other person's growth as an individual and to their happiness. And so we supported them and like pushed them along on that path. And I just really can't imagine our relationship without supporting one another's dreams. And the third is learning from our fights. You're gonna fight. We talk about that towards the end of this interview. We fight. Um, but man, we've just learned so much. You know, what? once the emotions have subsided, maybe the next day or the next week, um, we like talk about what happened in the fight and what we can learn from our fighting styles and from, you know, what we were fighting about, what came up during the fight, what each of us needs so that that doesn't get triggered again in the future. 
Um, so those are just some things that work for us. And I realize that it's different for every relationship. And there's so many ways that relationships can can succeed and be happy. I also wanted to just give a brief timeline of like our family and kids and relationship for people who are totally brand new to us, to me, to this family. Um, just so you've got like your bearings a little bit as we get into the conversation. So my daughter, Mycelia, who we also call Mycy, was born in 2006. Owen and I met in 2007, but didn't get together until six years later in 2013. We got pregnant at the end of 2015. And then in 2016, bought a house, moved in together, had our daughter, Nixie, and got married at the end of that year. So Mycelia is now 13 and Nixie is three. And then around the time Nixie was born is when our business started doing well too. Um, it was just kind of struggling and like, you know, chugging along up until that point. And then just all the years of hard work and everything and us combining forces for sure. The two of us combining forces, um, it all just kind of came together in about 2017 and the business has just grown since then. And so we're really um, learning and trying to catch up and like do it as smart as we can and do right by our customers and podcast listeners. Uh, so that's the timeline of our relationship. And so we were recording using um, GarageBand here and it like stopped recording twice. And luckily we saw it right away because we had the computer open. So I just immediately hit record and we went right back to it. But you'll hear that happen twice. Uh, we didn't take a long break in between or anything, just immediately push record right away. And yeah, that's it. Okay, this was also a very stress-free intro to record. Let's listen to this interview with my darling, sweet, wonderful husband, Owen Lindsay. Okay. Hey, O. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so I thought we would start by just talking about what's going on with us today and this week. And like, mm -hmm. I think we're both kind of, it was hard to take the time to do this interview. Yeah. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> as much as we've been looking forward to it, we know it's going to be like fun. It's hard to be like, yeah, we're going to take an hour or more out of our day to sit down and like not work basically yeah and with nixie at preschool we have what is it it's like four like hours four basically. hours so taking one hour is a lot yeah when we're so busy yeah and there's so much elderberry elixir to make <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's super intense we share kids a home land gardens and a business so we both work from home on the business and we are just together constantly just delegating tasks who's doing what right now huh. and when you run your own business the to-do list literally never ends when your parents the to-do list never ends yeah so we're tired all the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah i've been up since three <laughs> you have well i got i kind of fell back asleep before nixie woke up at six mm -hmm. yeah that's normal though yeah parenting stuff yeah Oh, I slept till eight. Thank you. <laughs> I really didn't expect to. When she got out of bed at 630, I was like, oh, okay, I'm up. And then next thing I knew it was eight o'clock, which is very late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost didn't make it to preschool on time. Um, so we put it on Instagram for people to ask questions for us, for you. And of course, one of the most frequently asked questions is how did we meet? So why don't you tell your version? Oh, I'll man. Tell mine. Okay. Well, I believe the first time we hung out was at uh, my Celia's second birthday. Yeah. Yeah. And so you were new in town. Mm -hmm. I think it was the first birthday, but it could have been the second. Was it? Okay. I think so. In 2007. Yeah. And it was at a, a mutual friend of ours house and had a... Just a really lovely party. I met you and your partner. You were with your girlfriend at the time. I was? Yeah. I don't even remember that. Yeah. You were with Courtney. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. And it was um, 
it was great meeting you guys and (laughs) (laughs) in the small town we live in you kind of it takes you like half an hour to walk a block there's only two blocks in the town because you run into so many people you know and we just kept crossing paths Mm -hmm. and um yeah that's where we first met (laughs) how to get together it, well, we hung out on my birthday years later <laughs> at a party. We seem to hang out at parties, I guess. Yeah, same same people's party. <laughs> yeah, it was a different house. And um, I was working downtown. Downtown and, Nevada City. Yeah. And I got a text from you asking <laughs> if I wanted to hang out or something or go to the National Sushi. Sushi. Sushi in the raw. Right. But I was working, but I said meet up afterwards. And then we did. <laughs> <laughs> Babe, there's so much more to it than that. All right. So, yeah, we first met that time. And then we were just in the same larger friend group for years. So that was in 2007. Yeah. Um, and I just always thought you were just such a sweetheart. Such good energy. Loved the energy. Yeah, I felt the same. You did. (laughs) Well, I'm seeing your big smile right now, and I just really remember your big smile and that that energy that you always have. Yeah, I think there was probably like a resonance between us from the beginning, Um, but I didn't think about you in any sort of romantic way until we ran into each other on your birthday mm. years later. So that was 2013. And I was single for the first time in like a decade. Mm-hmm. I knew you through three girlfriends and you knew me through two boyfriends. Yeah. And then we just happened to cross, literally cross paths in that, at that backyard barbecue on your birthday. Mm-hmm. And, um, your most recent girlfriend, I had seen her a few months earlier, and she was telling me that you guys were looking for land, and, you know, if, if I saw anything. So I was like, oh, how did, how's it going? Did you guys find land? And you were like, oh, no, and we broke up. And I was uh, like, oh, okay. And you were like, how about, how are you and Adam? And I was like, oh, we broke up, too. And we were like, oh, okay. But then we just, like, went our separate ways. Yeah. Um, And I was with two friends at that party, and, you know, we were, like, drinking a little bit. And I was like, you guys, I'm kind of, like, feeling Owen. And both of them were like, me, too. <laughs> <laughs> so all three of us were like, oh, let's go sit by Owen. And we were like trying to engage you all night. And we were just joking. Like, we'll give him a birthday present. <laughs> I'll never forget. <laughs> <laughs> but you were like, I don't know. You weren't tuned into our advances. So. No. <laughs> there were other advances that night. <laughs> <laughs> you were on fire that night. <laughs> I know. I mean, that's not really normal. I don't even remember who it was now. Some girl tried to hold my hand under the table. I think we might have held hands for a second. And there, there was, I feel like there was something else, too. That's funny. And then and then we ran into each other, like, a couple weeks later at the National. There was some sort of show or party going on at um, the Amazing National Hotel in downtown Nevada City, which is under renovation right now, but was the longest continuously operating hotel west of the Mississippi, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, it's a gold rush era building and institution <laughs> pumpkins looking at us, our kitty is spine. He knows we're both in here and he's like, let me in. <laughs> um, and then like a week later I was with two friends hanging out and again, single for the first time. And I was like, you guys, I just really like want to hook up with someone. And I, I've never, I've never been a random hookup person ever. I've never like sought a hookup. I always am seeking the connection and like the friendship and the love first, you know, but I was like, you know, I'm single for the first time. I'm young still. I'm like, who am I going to hook up with? There's no men in this town. And Sarah was like, what about Owen? And I was like, oh yeah, yes, totally. Owen. And I was like, I have his number, I think, still, you know. <laughs> and I yeah, and I texted you, asked if you wanted to go to sushi. You were working, but you said you'd meet up in the national balcony afterwards. And so we did. Some drinks. Yeah. It was magical. Summertime yeah. in downtown Nevada City is magic. Yeah, it really is. And then I was like, Do you want to come back to my place? <laughs> 
And then I was bottling St. John's wort during that week. It was the second year I had made and sold St. John's wort oil online. So you came into the kitchen and the house I was renting with a friend at the time. And it was like the the table was covered with bottles of mm-hmm. red liquid. And you were like, what's this? You were, you were super interested in it. Yeah, I think you had like five gallons of St. John's wort. Yeah, I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Which I'm just bringing that up because now we make quite a bit more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's where the business really started. Yeah, it was the early was days. From those five gallons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so we grabbed a bottle and went up to my room. <laughs> and you were a drummer at the time. And you were like, oh, my arms are so sore. I was like, oh, let me just rub some of this St. John's Ward oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it was a pretty oily evening. <laughs> so that is so funny to think about now that that was like the bridge to intimacy for us for that first night yeah (laughs) and put us of course in such a like relaxed open happy space together Mm -hmm. yeah and I I think the dress you wore that night really helped (laughs) stoke that fire It was like white. Mm-hmm. I want to say lace, but it was. It was like crochet. Crochet, yeah. Yeah, and I had it over a slip. Uh-huh. I still have that thing. Yeah, I love it. Um, and then so we just had like an amazing night. Yeah, it was just it was almost like we were just in love from that night on. Yeah, it was never like difficult or like one of us was chasing the other one. It was just from the beginning. It was just felt right Mm -hmm. it you know I always think of it as like it wasn't the the craziest like uh you know like this love's crazy Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know (laughs) like like really working for it it was just always very easy Mm -hmm. and I, I feel like the things we wanted to do in life were really aligned which we didn't even know yet no, at that point. No. At that point, it was just like one another's soul and body and mind. You were still singing vintage, and I was DJing and playing in bands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we were young. We needed to do plant work. Only you know? six years ago, and we were so young. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I, my Celia, my oldest, was just about to turn seven at the time. And I remember she was coming back to me the next morning from being with her dad for a couple of days at like 8.30. And so we had to get up early because we wanted you to not be there when she got there, you know, because right. that would be weird. <laughs> but I remember you came downstairs and you were like, I'm going to make you breakfast next time. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I love you. And then I, she came back with me for a day or two. And then I went out of town for four days for a like death midwifery and home funerals That's training yeah. in Sebastopol. And I mean, even though we'd had that amazing night, we didn't talk about what we wanted from it. So I was yeah. feeling very unsure of what you wanted, you know? And I just remember, I kept thinking like, he better want to do that again. <laughs> he better want to do that again. <laughs> and I didn't have reception there. It was like deep in the woods by the coast in Sebastopol. Right. But if I walked out into the road, I could get it. And we had a few flirty texts and I was like, okay, good, good. Okay, good. You know? And then when I got back, it was like late at night, but I picked you up and you came over and you had a box with food in it, you brought chicken to cook up and a bunch of veggies. And you were like, I grew these in my garden and I'm going to cook you dinner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember like, that. What? Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> so I had no idea you were a plant person until that night when you brought all these amazing garden produce over. Right. And then, yeah, we just kind of slowly started to realize that we were both wanted a future with plants in our lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think um, at some point when we were talking about the oils you were making, I said that I could see myself growing herbs for your business. Yeah. (laughs) That was a couple more weeks into it. You said, I can see myself growing herbs for your tinctures and medicines for the rest of my life. Yeah. And I remember after you went home, I called my mom and was like, oh my God, (laughs) guess what he just said? She was like, keep him. (laughs) I was like, no, I know. I'm no, I'm going to. And yeah what's happened it's funny i'm still cooking breakfast and (laughs) growing the herbs you know (laughs) all those things um another piece of it though is for the first three weeks which felt like an eternity at the time 
we kept, we did keep saying to each other, like, this is just for fun. This is just sex, basically. Yeah. Because we were both single again for the first time we in were a both very long relationships. time. relationships, yeah. And we were both like, I just need to do me. Yeah. And, you know, so I, we just kept saying that every time we, as we were falling deeper in love, we yeah. were also saying, no, we're not falling in love. Uh-huh. Um, and then there was that day where I had had a rough night the night before because <laughs> I catered a farm to table event. Oh, yeah. And a lot of tequila shots happened. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I had to pick you up. And you had to pick us up. <laughs> <laughs> you and your housemate. Yeah. And so the next morning I was not feeling great. Um, and so I was kind of in that like dreamy, hazy state where I was like, what am I talking about? I'm totally in love with him. I'm done doing this. This isn't a relationship thing. And you took me out to breakfast. You were just really nurturing my hangover. We walked through town holding hands. And I was just like, I want to be with him. You know, but I was like afraid to say something. And then we got back home when we were laying in bed and you said, do you love me yet? And I was like, yes, I do love you. I just realized today that I love you. (laughs) And you were like, okay, I love you too. We were like, oh, okay, good. We're doing this. No more pretending. (laughs) And then my C's seventh birthday was a few days after that. And so we decided that you would hang out with us for a little bit on that day. Oh, yeah. And we did. We took her to um, the toy store. That's right. <laughs> so you could pick a toy out that you right. would buy for her. So that was a great introduction to mom's new boyfriend. Yeah. <laughs> I remember. I remember that. Um, yeah, I mean, I... Prior to that, I hadn't really been around kids much, you know. I was very, like, trying to make the bands happen, trying to, to make the coolest parties DJing, you know. Mm-hmm. I wasn't, like, thinking about family dynamics or anything like that. So I remember going to buy that, to- that toy for a mighty scene and just feeling totally out of my element, mm-hmm. you know, but like wanting it to go good, of course. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So much has changed since then. Well, I'm your dad. Yeah. <laughs> what else happened is that you were a cigarette smoker when oh, we yeah. got together, mm-hmm. which was really hard for me. Yeah. But I was like willing to see if you would quit and you, I can't even believe you wanted to hang with me then. I know. It was hard. It was hard for <laughs> kissing you. Yeah, I uh, bet. That really speaks to how attracted I was to you. Um, but you you were like, I'm going to quit by her birthday. So this was like a few days before that we committed to each other. And you were like, okay, if I'm committing to you and yeah. you have this child, I'm not going to smoke cigarettes anymore. And I didn't want to smoke. Did. In, yeah, I didn't want to smoke in front of her. Yeah. You quit smoking cigarettes. Yeah. Yeah. But I still think about how amazing that is that you did that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I've been smoking since I was 16, too. So it's been a while. That's so crazy. The other thing yeah. that happened on her birthday that year was, so the so you worked this job late in the afternoon. So you slept until like noon at the, mm. when we got together. Yeah. And you were going to have to get to our house at like 11 to make the timing work, something like that. You know, so the day before you were like, okay, so I'll get there at 11 and we'll take her to the toy store. And I was like, great. Um, but I didn't want to tell her in case it didn't work out for some reason. So the next morning, it's like 10, 15, 10, 30. I haven't heard from you. Yeah. And I was like, he he can't do it. It's too much for him. He can't deal with the fact that I have a child. And I mean, this is how like in love with you I already was, you know. And I'm, I laid on the bed and I just started crying crying and my see came up to me she was like mom what's wrong and oh, I was like no. nothing nothing it's fine I'm just having uh, one of those emotional things you know and um for some reason I was listening to Elvis can't help falling in love with you like it came on or I thought of it and I was like that's the song I need to cry to right now so I put that on repeat laid in bed and cried and then at like 10 45 you texted on my way right. <laughs> I was like oh <laughs> he was just getting ready the whole time yeah yeah there's like a whole different level of like planning when you're a parent, you know, that I, um, I had no idea yeah. about. Yeah. For me, it was just like, I'll show up like within a half an hour of the time. Yeah. We sit. You know, it was like <laughs> how I did usually yeah. handle meeting up with people. Um, yeah. But it, scheduling is like a real thing when you're a parent. Mm-hmm. And it's something that, you know, I wasn't a parent until I was 40. Mm-hmm. So not being a very planned out person. Um, it's been, that's been like one of the most difficult things about parenting is planning things ahead of time yeah. and being punctual and all that stuff. Yeah. I remember you being like, 
I just, you know, I really like sleeping in and taking my time. And I was like, yeah, yeah no, me too. Everyone <laughs> does. But like when you're a parent, you just don't get to do that anymore. And it's pretty brutal. But And I was a parent 10 years before you were, so I was already used to the yeah. brutality. <laughs> yeah. Well, three years later, I'm a little more used to it. Yeah. You're great. You've been amazing. You've just <laughs> like adjusted so well to becoming a step parent and then a parent. Mm-hmm. And like, like your yeah, your life was just you were on a completely different path. Well, luckily I had you, you know, because you're a professional parent. <laughs> <laughs> you were always one step ahead of everything, and um, it's it's made the transition a lot easier for me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and there's so much to be said about becoming a parent later in life too, in middle age. Like, yeah. there's a lot to be said for doing it young, and a lot to be said for doing it older, mm-hmm. just being more stable point in life, mm-hmm. hopefully. Um, and then, yeah, you kind of just slowly started getting integrated into my business. You know, the next, next growing season was like, do you want to harvest St. John's wort with me? Yeah. Do you want to learn how I make the oils? And you did. Yeah. It was a couple of years of learning the harvesting techniques and the preparation techniques. Um, and, then I was helping with all of that. Yeah. Um, but still had a lot of questions. At this point, I don't really. Yeah. <laughs> well, you've pretty much taken over those aspects. Well, yeah. yeah. We've had to take on different aspects of the business. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that because that's a question that came in a lot. Um, how How do you run the business? Who takes on what roles? Oh. Do you want to talk about your role? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously I do the podcast. Yeah. Um, and which, you know, I've wanted to do, I've talked about before since 2006. And when I really got serious about it two years ago in fall 2017, we were kind of hesitant to take something else on. We had a one year old yeah, and an 11 year old. And, um, but you know, I was just like, this is just like, so in my heart to do this. And it has been for a long time. And I just feel like it's what needs to happen for the family, for the business, for people out there who are going to find it and love it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you were really supportive, even though it was hard and it took me yeah. away a lot while I was in the figure it out process. Um, and that was before I set up the Patreon too. So we just like, <laughs> we're not, it was just taking money and time away from the family at that point. Yeah. Uh, but so glad we're doing that. I do, I run the website. Um, the Instagram, of course, is me. Basically, anything you're interfacing with online, I'm putting out there, mm-hmm. except for Ellen's Instagram page. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do all the stupid, hard business stuff the bureaucratic stuff, the paperwork, the taxes, the LLC, um, just all. I just, I say stupid because I hate doing it so much. Um, Mm. The bookkeeping, the profit and loss statements, all that stuff that is not my zone of genius, not my natural strength in any way, but it has to get done. So over the years, I've just kind of cobbled it together and taught myself how to do it and reached out to people who could help. And of course, we pay people like the tax lady to help. Um, But, and I do that for our family too. Like I manage the finances for the family, do the budgeting make sure everything gets paid. Uh, And that takes a lot of mental energy and time. All the invisible work that is brain and soul crushing. Thank you. (laughs) Invisible (laughs) work. Yeah. Um, And have formulated all of the medicines and come up with the copy for the website and the labels and work with the graphic designer on getting them out there and place the orders for bottles and um, boxes, shipping supplies, and all that kind of stuff. I think that covers my roles. Yeah. So that's a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whole lot. Um, at this point in, in our business, we've been um, trying to grow more of our herbs that we use and steer away from wildcrafting. So I've been... We still wildcraft, but... Not as much. I think I grew about two, three, two thirds of the medicines, the winter medicines this year. And we have friends that let us harvest on their properties and other wild areas that we harvest from. So I do all of that. I do all the 
we just moved into a place that has a challenging soil type, so I've been building soil and creating the gardens for that. Um, I do the harvesting and I do the medicine making at this point. I usually, if it's like an edible medicine, I usually have amber and you taste it just to make sure. And all the recipes, like you said, are yours. Besides the, um, the mushroom recipe was kind of a collaboration. Oh, that was really you. The lens made and the ratio, you figured out ratios and best extraction methods. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like you brought some really key um, books to, mm. to look at and stuff. That's my role in life is bringing the key books. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we also have um, um, someone working for us now. Um, yeah, so she does bottling, labeling, shipping. Yeah. Which is amazing. Right. Because yeah, we really so. got to a point in the business where we could, we could not carry all the roles anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my role in the business is medicine making and harvesting and doing the gardening. And I also do, you know, like the cooking and um, the kitchen work. And the I, I do like a lot of the physical stuff, basically. Yeah. And you do most of the mental stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Alan so, cooks almost every single meal, does most of the cleaning in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you do like, you mm-hmm. do like the manly work. You do the heavy lifting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you can fix things. You're really handy. You can build things. Yeah. So nice having that. Um, parenting duties are pretty evenly split. You know, I sleep with Nixie yeah. because Owen snores. <laughs> <laughs> And you sleep with a sound machine. And I need a white noise machine. Both of uh, those things keep us out. So. Yeah, we're just incompatible sleepers. Um, so sleeping with Nixie all night is not always easy. She's getting better at sleeping, um, but she still wakes me up like once or twice a night. But then Owen lets me sleep in in the morning if that's yeah. needed. Yeah, Nix is usually up between six and seven. And so it's when I get up and we hang out for an hour to three, depending. Usually like an hour or two. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I do most of the parenting for my C, of course, cause she's a teenager now. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's my daughter. So like I take her to most of her things. I take her to school every morning. Um, and I'm just, yeah, parenting a teenager. We have a 13 year old and a three year old. So both not the easiest ages. Yeah. And it's not just you parenting my seat. No. I mean, you do do most of it, but yeah. I mean, I'll pick her up too from yeah. dance or school, depending. And I'm with Nixie when you're doing that. When I'm that doing too. that. Yeah. Yeah. We try to <laughs> make it as even as we can and with our skill sets go after that. I feel like I love how you stick to it and you, your drive to make it happen. And it just feels good to be in a partnership with someone who has that, Mm. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. Kids. So Mm -hmm. I I think everyone who's a parent knows this and especially, and business owners know this and the, the overlap of people who are parents and business owners. It's like I said earlier, constant task, management and delegation like all we're doing is planning and communicating who's doing what when Mm -hmm. what needs to get done today who's going to do it what how's the timing going to work usually with a three-year-old talking over us yeah (laughs) (laughs) they're yelling (laughs) yeah um it's just a lot it's really overwhelming and you know having an older daughter 10 years older I got through the difficult, like, baby toddler preschool stage, and then she was in her older kid stage, which is really pretty chill for most kids, at least. It was really chill with her. Um, She's the best kid. She is the best kid. So, (laughs) yeah. I'm just looking forward to a couple years from now when hopefully both girls mellow a little bit, you know. (laughs) Nixie's an older kid. (laughs) Micey's an older teenager. And maybe, maybe it's wishful thinking, but hopefully at that stage, they're not both going through such tumultuous brain growth phases that, that they're mm-hmm. both going through right now. Mm-hmm. And it's not even that bad. It could be so much worse with both of them. They're both really good kids. Yeah. Yeah. Micey 
13 year old, she basically wants to be left alone. She wants a lot of like time in her room where our three year old daughter, Nixie wants all your time, everything, you know, and it's like, it kind of works out in, in that area of it, of like, one's like, don't even look at me. <laughs> and like, the other one's like, but I'm playing with this magnet, you know, <laughs> check it out. Come play with it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard to find um, family activities that work for both of those ages. It's really hard. It is, yeah. There's like no board game. That will keep mm. them both entertained, um, going on walks. Right. Like, teenagers don't want to do that. You know, her, her teacher said the best thing at the beginning of the school year. She's like, at this age, they're less interested in nature and more interested in culture. And that's right. exactly where she's at. You know, she wants to know the music and, like, the movies and the TV shows. Okay, we just had a little glitchy thing happen. But so now I'm looking at the questions that people submitted. And one that's coming up is, how do we make our marriage a priority amidst business and kids? And we've kind of, we're kind of talking about that right now, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> are we like do we make a marriage a priority? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of things get. I don't want to say prioritize, but you know, we we just bought a house. We've got to make payments. You know, yeah, Our kids are come first. You know, and I think we both just kind of know we're in a real like sacrifice mm-hmm. of space of our life where yeah. we're just kind of working a lot and uh, trying to give our kids like the best life we can yeah, and set ourselves up for, for later in life too. Yeah. We're definitely long-term thinkers with yeah. what we're doing. Um, like right now we're in the middle of getting our trust and will set up. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like our love for each other is strong. And we know Mm -hmm. that, and there's no, like, we were just talking about how we both feel really satisfied. Um, And it's not often we get time to even talk to each other. Yeah. Because we're, when we have free time, we're, like, really hustling. (laughs) And when the kids are around, there's, you know, it's all about them. (laughs) (laughs) Thinking that um, we kind of got, like turned on or like in a like lovey-dovey state the other day after a meeting with our mortgage broker to refinance our house (laughs) because it was like sitting in a room looking at each other spending time together for an hour talking about our lives and then also it was like exciting to get your name on the house because right now your name isn't on the house because when we bought it three years ago my dad needed to co-sign I didn't qualify at that point yeah and now you do and so I was just like laughing like this is now what is exciting to us. <laughs> this is what bonds us and brings us closer together. This adult bullshit, like refinancing a house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, it's also like, for me, it's like what I've always wanted. So it's exciting, you know. To be a homeowner. To be a homeowner. And like, you always wanted land because yeah. you love gardening and like working out on the land. That's what you spend most of your day doing yeah being outside mm-hmm. and that is what makes me happy i hate i i don't really like being inside yeah too much um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just more comfortable outside but as far as prioritizing the marriage so yeah i don't i don't think we necessarily do the best job of that like we don't talk about how are we gonna i think we've gone on one date yeah it's just been one no, two, two, couple, both yeah. of our wedding anniversaries. Yeah. Um, but Just we do, up. yeah, every night after Nixie's asleep, we try to hang out. And sometimes sometimes it's like, no, like well, I'm going to do my own thing. And we're both happy doing our own things. Because that's important, totally. too. We don't get alone time during the day. Yeah. Um, but I guess it's the weeks that my Celia is with us that we all, the three of us all hang out once Nixie's asleep right. every night. Mm-hmm. And I love that. Me too. I love those nights. I do too. Um, and we try to like relax in the afternoons when we can put on some records. Maybe we'll have a beer. Uh-huh. If not, we'll have kombucha or tea or just try to be like, now we're relaxing together as a family. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we have to still stay in work mode late into the afternoon and be like, okay, you're with Nixie while cooking dinner and I'm down here finishing orders. And you know, there's those days too. Yeah. Um, 
let's tell the story of our marriage since that just got mentioned because that's a funny one too. So we we were just, when we were, the first few years we were together, we were really trying to take it slowly, partially because of Micey and having this child and just being like, let's not rush into it in case it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, and let's just be totally sure before we move in together and all that stuff. And then two and a half years into the relationship, uh, my mom died in a car accident and you were so there for you. were the first person I called. Well, I called my sister first, but she didn't answer for a couple hours. That's a whole story that I've yet to tell on this podcast. Um, but I called you and you were up early, which you're not usually still at that point, but we were going to go look for a car for you that day. So we, you got up early and you came Mm -hmm. over and you were just so amazing. And you were so amazing through the whole experience in the first few weeks and months of grief and getting through what had happened. And we, okay. (laughs) No, I don't want, I want to, I want to save the whole story of Nixie's conception for another podcast when I tell the whole story of my mom's death. But what happened was we conceived Nixie three weeks after my mom died. Yeah. And do you, do you remember like how, how you felt when I told you, I remember I texted you because we were living separately still. I was living with Micey, you were living where you were, and I was like, hey, come over. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, you know, I, I very much so remember that. <laughs> <laughs> because up until that point, we had always said we weren't going to have kids. Um, yeah, yeah. But then just a month before this happened, we had the conversation had slowly shifted towards, well, maybe we would have a baby. Yeah. So that door had just slightly opened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I remember saying, "Yeah, I, I, I could see myself having a kid with you," you know. But it was like just one conversation. Yeah, know? it wasn't like <laughs> we weren't trying or anything. No, we were. We were trying not to. Yeah. And um, back to the, the conversation we had when you told me that you're pregnant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I remember sitting on your bed. Mm-hmm. And, um, just, just knowing that like, we we were going to have this kid, you you know, like it wasn't like we weren't going to, or that, that, that was even an option. Yeah. Um, not for like, I feel like not for like really any like reason or anything. Yeah. It was just, um, it just... To me, it just felt like it was something we were going to do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I remember you said, like, crying and saying it's going to be so hard. You don't even know. (laughs) And I had no idea how hard it was going to be. I was like, oh, babe, I can't wait to, like, be super burnt out and tired, you know, and be living that life with you. And I didn't realize that's, like, most days for years when you have kids, you know, just the burnout is is real it's really intense um but um yeah like I mean like I said earlier like I had never really thought much about family dynamics or or family life or how hard it was or I'd only like before we had Nixie I'd only held one two two kids Mm -hmm. and one was like 10 years before Mm -hmm. and the other one was like two weeks before Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know (laughs) I'd only had two babies. So, yeah, it just wasn't really in my sphere at all, people with kids or yeah, any of that. So. But you were happy. I have a picture of you holding the um, pregnancy test with a huge smile on your face. Oh, yeah, I was so happy. <laughs> I didn't I know what so I was getting too. into. You know, I was just but, sobbing. I just sobbed for hours after yeah. getting that pregnancy test. I was so happy. Um, yeah. So then... Also, because around the same time, I was like, you know, my mom, I inherited some money from her retirement account. She had been a blackjack and roulette dealer for 40 years at Harris Lake Tahoe Mm -hmm. and started in the 70s when people gave good retirement account Mm -hmm. matches, you know. Um, So I had inherited some money from that. And I was like, does this mean I can buy a house, you know? So I started really looking into that possibility, which is not something I ever envisioned for myself. Mm-hmm. I'd been the such a broke single mom for so many years. Like ne- never ever thought I'd be a homeowner. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and I did have enough money for a down payment, but didn't make enough money to qualify for a loan. Um, and so called my dad and I had asked him before to co-sign a loan for me. My mom had asked him also. And he always said, no, 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 you know, but I think because mom had died, they were divorced at this point. He was like, okay, I'll do it. So basically the whole pregnancy was like this hellacious effort at owning a home. Mm -hmm. Um, it was just like so complicated, so many moving parts. Yeah. So, so much stress, so much adulting while I was pregnant. Like I really did not have a nice and relaxing and nourishing pregnancy looking back on it because I was so focused on, I knew if I don't, if we don't buy this house now, it's never going to happen for me. It's like now or never. Right. Prices are going up. Everything is aligning right now, even though it's super difficult. So many phone calls, so many tears, so much stress. And it worked out and we got this place and we still love it so much. It's such a dream. We've been here for three years now. Um, and we, so we only moved in together a month before Nixie was born. Yeah. I was like super pregnant. <laughs> It wasn't even a month. I think it was like three weeks. Yeah. yeah. Height of summer, August. Yeah. It just worked out. And we were having a home birth. So I was like super focused on getting the house ready to give birth in. Right. And just like managing you. Like, do this, do that, do this, do that. Yeah. And you were exhausted. We were like definitely at each other's you, throats. You called in your sister. Yeah. She like, <laughs> throwing boxes around, <laughs> organizing. She's a crazy organizer. <laughs> yeah. Lacey made it happen. She really did. Yeah. Um, she came and stayed with us basically the last few weeks of my pregnancy and got the house together and was there the night Nixie was born. Yeah. And my friend Jen was there too, an amazing midwives yeah. and just so special that Nix was born in this house that we love so much. Um, and Pumpkin Man. And cat. Pumpkin was there. <laughs> <laughs> and our two amazing midwives and wonderful photographer, Jolene. Oh, that's right, yeah. And so we still weren't married at this point. And we hadn't even really considered being married no so it, wasn't, it wasn't a priority for us yeah yeah it wasn't something that was like important to yeah us. um but then come december i was thinking about having to file taxes for the year because we had gotten official with the business we weren't an llc yet but we were like registered sole proprietor and i called the tax lady and i was like how am i gonna file how are owen and i gonna file taxes together he's running the business with me there's no other source of income but his name isn't on the business and she was like yeah you need to get married if you want it to be easy I was like, that's what I was thinking too, you know? <laughs> so literally <laughs> dropped my C off at school that morning, came back home and was like, let's get married. Once we pick her up from school today, yeah. let's go down the courthouse and do it. And you're like, okay. <laughs> Nixie was two months old. Um, yeah. I, I spent like three hours tearing the ha- house apart, looking for my grandma's diamond ring uh-huh. and never found it. And Lacey later found it at her house in Tahoe. Uh-huh. So it was never there at all. But I had another ring. You had a ring. I had a white dress that still fit me. <laughs> still very postpartum plump at that point. Uh-huh. And we called some friends together and we got married down at the government building. And it was so yeah. sweet. It, it was, was amazing. It was Everyone amazing we invited day. came, you know, and it just, it felt so good to have our friends are supporting. Yeah. And their kids there. Yeah. And, and I, I, don't, I didn't really realize like how important being married would be be to me mm-hmm. until we kind of did it for business reasons mm-hmm. you know but <laughs> i'm like proud to be married to you and like i love being married to you um it just it it feels good to be like homeowners business owners married together and in this life together yeah with someone yeah having kid having a kid together you know yeah i feel the same way i love being married yeah never thought i would yeah be married or want to be married right and i feel like our skills or our things that we can that we can do really align with like like your weak points and my strong points or my strong yeah. points and your weak points are really balanced in it in, in a way that works for us yeah for sure and going back to like we were Basically middle age when we got, I mean, I was in my late thirties. You were, you were two. I was in my mid thirties. You're nearly, anyway, now I'm 38 and you're 43. Mm-hmm. We've been together six years. Yeah. And I just, I just think there's something so sweet about committing to a relationship after you've gone through many relationships, you've had a lot of life experience. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that the younger you are, when you get married, the more likely you are to divorce. 
it's I feel really like you're missing awkward. out on something. You know. Like what, so in your wild oats type thing? Yeah, or like, I don't know, just so many things come with marriage that, mm-hmm. and kids, you know, this is different from like when you're young and like think you're going to be the next David Bowie, you know, or something, you Speaking know. Speaking for yourself. <laughs> I mean, because I was kind of a young parent. I was 25. I mean. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I guess I'm just saying when people ask, your marriage seems so healthy. Like, why? what do you do to make it work? I think that a part of it is that we came to it later in life. I, I don't know too. if it would have worked out if we were younger. Right. And I, I think that people who get married young face a lot of challenges. Not that it doesn't work out for some people, but I, I definitely think it's harder. It's, if you have kids, especially. And I guess I'm mostly speaking about people who have kids right, right I mean, away. Yeah. Some things are easier, like having the energy... Yeah, totally. Kids, you know. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, a question that someone asked is, "What are we growing in our gardens?" Oh boy, I'm probably going to leave some things out. Yeah, let's. I know it's it's been glitchy the whole time, but I think it's recording. Fine. Okay, it does this. Well, we're growing mugwort, yarrow. Motherwort, um, lemon balm, um, elder trees, elder trees, nettle, calendula. Yeah. I mean, we could just name so many Lots plants right now. Lots of herbs. Yeah. Um, a lot of them for the business. For yeah. The medicines we make. I've been trying to grow a lot of berries for the kids. Um, it's it's just nice to plant something you plant one time instead of like with vegetables planting every year. Um, so working on that and, um, what else do we got? Um, Angelica. Datura. Datura. <laughs> <laughs> Past guest Marie Sue gave us a couple Datura plants. Um, oh, and then we have the food garden. Tomatoes. Yeah. yeah basil. Yeah. Rosemary. Time, time oregano but the pumpkin <laughs> yeah <laughs> seeded itself uh-huh. there's more there's burdock and um ashwagandha um, there's kind of experimental gardens that are just kind of wild mm-hmm. um yeah we've got so we've got like three enclosed garden spaces because we definitely have deer we have bears quail mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. animals coming through and then there's just like like things that own is just put around the property yeah that they're not likely to eat like mugwort and lemon balm yeah and it's been three years mm-hmm. here and so it takes time to figure out um what's going to work where what's just going to grow on its own what needs irrigation um what i've heard it usually takes like five years to kind of set up your farm and feeling that this third year, every year I have some success and a lot, a lot of failure, but it kind of builds up. <laughs> the success builds over, over time. And then you have something that's providing for your business and your family. Yeah. And I love that we are pivoting away from wild crafting. Me too. Out of just a concern for over harvesting as people become more aware of the medicinal herbs growing in their landscapes um, and we've always practiced, you know, really um, mindful wildcrafting yeah. and leaving a huge percentage oh. of what we're wildcrafting behind. All the spots that we've wildcrafted from for years, for six years now, mm-hmm. they only get bigger and better because we tend them, um, you know, we both practice plant connection, earth connection, always, we always check in with the plants. And one of the, the answers that I get from the plants when I ask, like, what can I do for you? Is almost always my eyes will go right towards, like, you know, a plant that's coming in and taking over their patch, like blackberry or scotch broom, or usually something invasive. Um, and so I'll do a little bit of weeding while I'm there, you know, or 
I like to skeet, seed scatter while I'm there too. And um, so just, you scatter with seeds from the plant that you're harvesting? Yeah, I do that. If there's seeds, mm -hmm. when I'm collecting seeds, I'll usually just, it's it's more just a, like a token of appreciation. Like here, I'll spread your seed we for propagate you. propagate. <laughs> But yeah, just um, and I'll, just um, ethical harvesting, harvesting the right way where the plants don't die, and actually a lot of times produce more seeds and more tops and whatever, and just do better. Um, really care. You get the stand. <laughs> and speaking of that, um, Owen taught a class out here on our property. I guess it was in the springtime, so a few months ago. A nice rainy day. Um, a plant communication class. And it was so sweet because it was part of the vision we've always had of of teaching plant skills out here on on the land in our home. Um, and it was so cool because it was Owen's first time teaching a class, and it was a a rousing success. Yeah, it was it was really nice, and it was it was funny because most everyone that came had already had some sort of plant connection in their life. And I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting people to like want to get into it and learn about it. But it was, it was people that already had experienced it that came. And that was neat. Yeah. And yeah, it was just, it was great. Um, it was, yeah. Yeah, plant communication has been kind of a bummer lately for me. It's not a bummer, but it's just been really, really sad. Like um, where we live is on a serpentine gabbro outcropping. That's the kind of soil. It's a rare soil type. Um, it's basically void of any nutrient and really high in magnesium. And so the plants that grow here have to be pretty hardy um, or be pretty strong. And um, it's 1.5% of, California, of uh, California's soil types and about 80% of California's rare endemic plants grow in the soil type. So it's, there's not a lot of it, but there's a lot of our, our rare plants that live in it. And, and we didn't know this when we bought the house and moved in. No, this, <laughs> that was part of the adventure of moving out of here. So that it's really special to live on it in a place like this. Um, but our town with funding from our California government and with our amazing uh, fire organizations there. Because we're, we're right in the middle of wildfire country. We're in California, yeah. They're clearing about 2,000 acres of this land. Around our house. Around our house. So, um, And no one asked the plants if that was okay. There was no, like, asking the animals that live here. Yeah, um, that was okay. And so it's just heavy because um, last week, about every day, I was out communing with the plants and um, just taking on that, that grief. And it's, it's not really something we do in our society. We don't, everything's for us, everything's for the people. And there's, there's other living beings on this planet and they, we can't, we shouldn't take without asking. And when I harvest for the business, I always ask. And sometimes I get a no. And that could be for a number of reasons. Maybe someone sprayed it or, you know, I don't know. Um, but it's, it's being sensitive to that and being in tune with that energy. It's been hard out here with the clearing that's been going on. And, uh, yeah, sometimes it's hard. <laughs> it's not always awesome being able to communicate with plants. Mm -hmm. Um, I so appreciate the awareness that you've been bringing around, around that issue though. And that this project to clear the underbrush, you know, makes sense in some ways. Wildfire is less likely to spread quickly immediately after it's cleared. But as you pointed out, people heading this project, they're not planning on maintaining the no. clearance. It's all going to grow back. 
Um, that's what that's what happened in paradise with the big paradise fire. The campfire. The campfire. Yeah, yeah. It was um, a thinning project through the forest there, and about four years after that thinning process, all the understory had grown back, but not enough to stop the winds that blew through there so fast that there wasn't time to evacuate. So that's basically what they're creating out here is like through a really sensitive area, um, a fire break that they're not going to maintain. Not that I'd want them to maintain it. I mean, it just shouldn't. And not that I'm against a fire break either. Um, it just shouldn't be here. The reason why it is here is because there, there's an old, uh, fire road that was already there it's on the the city the edge of the city um and it's where the grasslands meet the chaparral the the kind of more like shrubs and bushes before you hit the bigger trees the conifers here so they're trying to clear out the chaparral uh the shrubs and stuff but it's all going to grow back you yeah know? it's and a it's short-sighted not gonna, yeah. Very human yeah. plan to come and dominate nature, but it's so short-sighted. Yeah. Um, While well, you've been educating about that and mm-hmm. advocating for that, I so appreciate you going out and communicating with the trees and, I mean, the, the plants who are going to be affected by this and all the wildlife. Yeah. I wish there were more people... <laughs> doing it i wish there was like something in our culture that was like sometimes these projects have to happen and let's hold ceremony yeah let's just let them know that it's coming at least i I feel like Mm -hmm. i'm taking the brunt of that i don't know anyone else doing it Mm -hmm. everyone else is like yay a fire break Mm -hmm. you know (laughs) it's gonna save our town (laughs) but i don't know it's hard where people's land meets wildlife land, too. It's just a difficult situation. I don't think it's all going to be bad. I think some things will do good. Some things will do bad. Um, I was talking with a botanist friend of mine. He was saying, yeah, you know, there's probably going to be a lot of weeds that come in. You know, just like plants that aren't plants. typically on that soil. Nature will regenerate in some way. In some way. Basically. <laughs> but it's such a special area. You know? um, so you've been doing that. How how do you feel about the education and advocacy work that I've been doing around mandated vaccines? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very proud that you're taking that on and all the risks that come along with that and all the like the trolls that have been coming after you online, you know, and and the awareness that you're bringing to people is amazing. Um, It's scary for me sometimes too, because it's through our business site, you know, Yeah, it is scary. but I'm really proud of you and I'm glad you're using your platform to make change and to protest. Like, that's all we got right now. Like is civil disobedience, everything, all the reason why shit is so fucked up is because all of our systems are collapsing right now. Our, our environment is getting trashed. Our corporations are being super greedy because they're losing their foothold. Our medical system, totally fucked. All these systems are, are falling apart. And they're squeezing it out of us. You know, they're trying to get every last drop out of us. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole thing with this, this, whatever side you stand on with vaccinations, it's like they want mandatory vaccinations for everyone. And they've already taken religious freedoms. They just took your medical, our medical freedoms here in California. And now they've already introduced, um, Bills for, like, awareness for adults to be vaccinated. Mm, It's a resolution. It's not a bill yet, but it's paving the way for a future bill for mandated vaccines for all adults in California, and it's coming to the rest of the country in the next few years. Yeah, and it's just another example of, like, 
the medical business, you know, pharmaceutical companies trying to get more money out of us and not caring about the effects. Who gets hurt. Yeah. You're so right on like the environmental front, um, climate change, pharma, greedy corporations on every level. It's like civil uprising yeah. is the is the last stand and it's happening. Yeah, it's happening on all those fronts. Through protest. Yeah, I mean you don't even I mean you can break the law. You don't have to necessarily break the law to be part of like a civil uprising. I'm not talking like, you know, kill the CEO of like <laughs> Exile Mobile or something. You know, that's not the way to do it. But there's there's civil disobedience you can do in groups where if you do end up getting in trouble, you might go to jail for the night. Yeah, well, what, like, what happened at the Capitol was people volunteered to be arrested. You know, like, I think you know, like, sh- this person doesn't want to be arrested. She's got to go back and nurse her baby. Although two nursing mothers did volunteer to be arrested at the Capitol last week, which was amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, yeah, there's, like, the civil uprising, and then there's the education piece, which, you know, is what I'm really engaged in on Instagram. And there's going to be some upcoming podcasts, too. Um, but I just really appreciate your support because it's taken a toll on me. It's taken a toll on us. And um, it hasn't taken a toll on the business yet, but that could happen. Hmm. And so, yeah, just thank you always for your support and everything. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I'm so proud you of you. the same way. Like, you're making me proud when I'm at home with Nixie and you're down at the Capitol protest. <laughs> you're, like, there for both of us. Yeah. 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 Thanks. so. Yeah. I hope you feel just as supported by me. I do. Yeah. I, you know, like with the plant communication thing, I, this has been going on for 20 years for me. And so the, the fact that I can talk to you about it, that you practice it too, and that I have someone who's like-minded for 20 years, I didn't know anyone who had these connections with plants. I thought I was on my own. I thought maybe I was going crazy. You know, it was something I was afraid to talk about with people. Um, but nowadays, there's all kinds of people teaching plant communication classes, earth connection, all kinds of stuff. And that was what inspired me to start teaching. I was like, oh, I'm not the only one. Yeah, this yeah. isn't abnormal at all. This is basic human right. practice that all of our ancestors were engaged in. Yeah. And people just need to be, be shown the way to remember. And it's so out of step with the way we live today that sometimes it's painful, like with this clearing. Um, Because we don't have that connection. That It's all heart connection. And so when you reopen that heart connection with the earth and you see what we're doing to the earth, it's um, or to the plants, the earth will be fine. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But the plants um, and the other living beings on this planet and live a normal American life. You know, it's it's hard. It's really out of step. And I, I feel like there needs to be some kind of, some change. Yeah. Or we're just going to destroy everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's hard having kids. It's so hard having kids right now. I don't think maybe people without children understand how much everyone I know who's a parent thinks every day, like, what is the future for my children? Yeah. Are they like, what, how far is this all going to go? Um, mm. are, do they even have a future? Okay. We had a little glitch there again, but we're back just to say goodbye. Yeah. We need to get back to our lives. I need to find and print out our ins- home insurance declarations page. Oh, that and, and then you fun. or me need to meet up with, the, our guy later today to submit all those papers and right we need to come up with the money to pay for all of this mm-hmm. so we've got to get back to real life right now um but thanks oh i'm glad we finally did this i always yeah. wanted to have you be a guest and i know other people have wanted it too and i think we covered most people's questions um just during our conversation so that's why i didn't really read them all out yeah cool yeah it's really nice to have some time with you. I know. Just <laughs> converse for an hour straight. Yeah. Literally hasn't happened. I don't we, think. We should do this again, but not record it. Just... <laughs> that's, that's the point of that. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. I just, I was, I was going to say, I think maybe the only time we've ever done this is when we were fighting. <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> 
talked for an hour straight. You know? Oh my God. So I just want to uh, make it clear that we do sometimes fight too. Yeah. You know, I'm always right though. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, overall, oh, it's a don't. really solid marriage. And most of yeah. the fights happened, you know, when Nixie was younger, when we were just getting used to yeah. parenting. And I got to say, most fights were kind of like a, a misunderstanding of the other person's feelings. You know, it wasn't like you did something super lame. Yeah, yeah. It was totally. a lot of times just getting hurt or misunderstanding what the other person was saying. And being so tired and overwhelmed. I always tell first-time pregnant parents, like, be prepared to fight like you've never fought before. Because mm-hmm. literally every every person I, mom I've ever talked to has said that that happened to them in the first year of their baby's life. Yeah, it's like getting a lot of energy out too uh-huh. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we've we I think did like the smartest thing you can do and learned from every fight. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I don't remember the last time we fought. Actually, we get annoyed. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> <laughs> we get annoyed and like I don't know. You know, I don't yeah. know. We have our little like tense moments, but yeah. we're good at getting through them. And we just know each other so well now that we can kind of figure out what what's triggering someone mm-hmm. or how far we want to take this thing, or maybe when is a good time to talk. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. an important one: is not just fighting in the moment because you feel angry yeah. about something, but waiting until an appropriate time. Yeah, yeah. Don't fight when you're angry. <laughs> um, okay, and then one more question I was wanting to ask you is like, what what do you envision for the future? What are your goals for yourself, for the family, for the business? Oh man, I I don't know. I just I'm, I guess I'm so focused on right now in the present with everything, and everything is unfolding in a great way. Just kind of keeping on with the the gardens and the growing and the expanding. Yeah. The You're really um, land focused. Like yeah. Seeing what, how you want the land to unfold and the plants and what's where and making sure we have enough to harvest for the medicines that we make mm-hmm. that people have come to rely on. Yeah. Well, I want to keep doing the podcast. I just feel so grateful that even when I feel totally burnt out from life, I never feel like, stopping the podcast. I love doing it so much. Yeah, it's great. I Um, listen to it all the time. (laughs) (laughs) And yeah, keep, I mean, the, the medicine business is getting hard to keep up with. Um, and like, we are going to sell out of St. John's Ward Oil like soon, I think probably before Christmas, the way things are going, which is Mm -hmm. crazy because last year it didn't sell out until June. We make it again in like July basically. Yeah. Um, so like the, the medicine making is really growing or the medicine selling is really growing in a way that I don't know if we're going to be able to keep up with or even want to keep up with. Cause it does put a put pressure on the plant population. You know, even if we're growing it ourselves, like we don't have the endless capacity to be making these medicines, even with the help of our wonderful employee. Mm-hmm. So we'll, I, I, I want to be like kind of on a steady growth path with the medicine making, maybe more St. John's word oils in the future. If yeah. we can find healthy stands to harvest from sustainably. If, if anybody has any tips on growing St. John's word, I've had the hardest time with it. Yeah. Um, well, in Cammy's class, there's a whole thing on it. I don't know if we've watched that module yet, mm-hmm. her oil making class. Um, and I mean, my, long time big goal has always like my entire life been to write books so I really want to do that mm-hmm. I want, <laughs> really you to do want that. to do that yeah. there's literally no time for it now um and I figure that like doing the podcast is sort of laying the foundation for writing a book you know it gives me connections to people who could help with that it gives me ideas of things to write about um and then to just keep like growing super healthy children to mm-hmm just give them a solid foundation for life. I guess, you know, what every parent wants Mm -hmm. to do and keep advocating on behalf of children everywhere and children's health. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I need to use the bathroom and drink some water. Okay. I love you. Owen. I love you. Thank you for taking these medicine stories in I hope they inspire you to keep walking the mythic path of your own unfolding self. 
I love sharing information and will always put any relevant links in the show notes. You can find past episodes, my blog, and our handmade herbal medicines at mythicmedicine.love. We've got reishi, lion's mane, elderberry, mugwort, yarrow, redwood, body oils, an amazing sleep medicine, heart medicine, earth essences, so much more, more than I can list there, mythicmedicine.love. While you're there, check out my quiz, which healing herb is your spirit medicine? It's fun and lighthearted, but the results are really in-depth and designed to bring you into closer alignment with both the medicine that you're in need of and the medicine that you already carry and can bring to others. If you love the show, please consider supporting it at patreon.com slash medicine stories. It is so worth your while. There are dozens and dozens of killer rewards there, and I've been told by many folks that it's the best Patreon out there. We've got ebooks, downloadable PDFs, bonus interviews, guided meditations, giveaways, resource guides, links to online learning and behind the scenes stuff, and just so much more. The best of it is available at the $2 a month level. Thank you. And please subscribe on whichever app you use. Just click that little subscribe button and review on iTunes. It's so helpful. And if you do that, you just may be featured in a listener spotlight in the future. The music that opens the show is by Marie Sue. That's M-A-R-I-E-E. S-I-O-U-X from her beautiful song, Wild Eyes. Thank you, Marie. And thanks to you all. I look forward to next time.